Hello everyone, welcome to the video. Please like and subscribe. With that let's begin. I saw my death in my dreams, many times, but I didn't die. And I have multiple real life near deaths as well, but I didn't die. For some, they called it a miracle, a luck, a good fortune, and so on. But for me, it's a curse, for me to live while those who I fight with didn't. Sure I have those who waited for my safe arrival back home, but that doesn't fade away the guilt of being the only survivor among the comrades who I grew up with, the comrades who became a family to me. And if you ask me, what kind of hero that able to protect many people, people that are strangers, but unable to protect his own family? Is he worthy of being called a hero? Or is he an unfortunate survivor? For me, I'm both. Sai. Izuku Sai as he slumped down to his chair. Tough day. K asked as he approached Izuku. Tough life. Izuku corrected. Well, that is one of the requirement of this job, Delta. Alex said as he walked by and grabbed a beer from the table in front of Izuku. I know that, Alex Izuku reply. Are you complaining? K asked. Even if I did, what can I do? This is my life now, Izuku said as he flexed his arms. You can always quit, son. Price said from across the room. Huh. The day I quit is the day I die, Izuku stated. Damn right. Gaz agrees. That's the spirit. Foley agrees as well. And beside, if I quit, I can't enjoy free beer anymore. Izuku claim as he grab a beer from the table and lift it above his head. The entire room then laugh as they can't disagree with that. Still, I like Budweiser better soap said as he grab a bottle of bucks from the table. Hey, you want the best, you bought German. Izuku stated while pointing soap with his bottle. Touche soap reply before drinking the beer. Colonel Midoriya. Izuku suddenly hears someone calling him. He look around but didn't see anyone trying to call him. Izuku is confused but decided to ignore it. Colonel Midoriya. Izuku turn around again only to see Ghost behind him. What's the matter, Delta? Ghost ask. Did you call me earlier? Izuku ask. No, I didn't. Ghost denied before walking away. Izuku only watches Ghost walk away before looking around again. Colonel Midoriya. Izuku yank his head around as he stand up, trying to figure out who's calling him. What's the matter, Iz? K ask as he and others notice Izuku suddenly stand up looking alarmed. Colonel Midoriya. Izuku look at K before looking at the others as well. Is K asked confused of Izuku's behavior. Izuku then started to see his surrounding began to spin around and he started to get dizzy and disoriented. Is Delta, Colonel Midoriya everyone call for him only making him even more confused. Colonel Midoriya. Izuku finally awakened from his daydream and realized that he is on a TV station. Ah, sorry. My mind was somewhere else. Izuku apologize. That's okay, Colonel. After what you've been through, I understand. The interviewer reassure. Yes, you are seeing and reading that correctly. That is me, Izuku Midoriya, war hero, symbol of hope, etc. on a TV station doing some interview on national television. Being the symbol of hope plus a temporary leave from Ranger Corp means that I will be invited for interview like this. And I can't decline all offers, I need to attend some of them. So regarding my question earlier, the interviewer asked, I'm sorry, what was the question again? Izuku asked, earlier we discussed about how quirks make the world into an era of technological stagnation. And the war awaken all of our eyes that we are neglecting technological progress, that our species are well known of for a strange abilities that appear out of nowhere. The interviewer explained, And now, we're no longer pushing towards Quirk's development but technological development again. And one of the major agenda is to create a permanent moon base in the next five years and a subsequent manned mission to Mars in ten years, which is ambitious remembering the state of the world after the war has ruined it. But the technology gained from both mission will help our way of life here and most importantly, rebuilt the world better than before. Izuku added, which I agree are ambitious, especially the Mars mission. Remembering the last time we went to the Red Planet is almost 100 years ago. The interviewer claimed, Quirks changed the world forever. And now the world change again Izuku stated. Change for the better of course. The interviewer smile. Exactly. Izuku smile as well. And now regarding the next question before you doze off. What is your opinion of heroes? The interviewer asked. For one, I'm gonna quote what Emperor Yamato believe of a hero is. Izuku said. The Emperor. So this will be very serious. The interviewer said surprise. It is. He said and I quote a hero. A true hero is an individual with extraordinary achievement. An individual who's willing to go above and beyond what is necessary to fight. To protect, to save others regardless if that action cost him his limbs or life. That's what he told me. Izuku quote Emperor Yamato. That's very wise of him. And an excellent description of what a hero is the interviewer nod his head and I assume that also describe yourself as well. He added. Yes, but not what you think. Izuku said. Hum, really? Can you please elaborate it? The interviewer requested. For one is a description of a hero. For the second point is that I never said to myself or to other that I am a hero. Izuku claim. But you are a hero. Colonel the interviewer insist. 
That's my point Izuku point at the interviewer who became confused I don't see myself a hero, but you did. The second point, a true hero never self-claimed that they are a hero, but those around him did. Izuku explained, so an acknowledgement by other the interviewer understand. Exactly. Because those who self-claim that they are something or able to do something usually exaggerate the truth of who they are or what the able to do Izuku explain. I agree to that. But sometimes the public are the one who exaggerate things. How about that? The interviewer asks. Well it's best to be honest and tries to fix the misunderstanding that others believe in. No one wanted to be misunderstood by others, whether it's good or bad. Izuku reply. Regarding that public acknowledgement. What if no one see a hero in action? What if everyone just run away the second a conflict arise and no witnesses saw a hero in action? Does that mean the hero will not get any acknowledgement? The interviewer ask. While it's true that in order to receive the title of a hero one need to be acknowledged by others, but a true hero didn't really care about that. Those who trained to do their jobs because it was the right thing to do didn't advertise the nature of their work, nor seek recognition for their actions. This creed is a commitment, and for some, an obligation, one that they believe in their entire life as they serve others, but not be served by others. Izuku explained, and that's what heroes are in the core, they are a public servant, they are meant to serve the public. But I feel the heroes that we all know is quite different from what you just said, Colonel. The interviewer claim, the hero that our society know for so long is not the hero that Emperor Yamato described. What the emperor describe as a hero is a title, but the hero that everyone knows these days are heroes as in a profession, a job, not as a title that was given by extraordinary achievement or acknowledgement, but simply by passing a test, and even thought. The tests are not an easy one, you could gain it with a little bit of effort, and a good quirk, Izuku explained, and no effort at all, if you have a very good quirk to begin with. The interviewer added our society always praise those who have strong quirks, and usually they are spotlight of society. He said, yeah, they do it for fame for attention, for money. This brings me to the third point. Our society give the title of hero so easily, with a predetermined test. And like I mentioned earlier that the tests are not an easy one, but our society give them way too easy and just like that. And most of those you get the title of hero do it not because of they wanted to uphold the value of heroism, but because of the nature of a hero being a profession itself, money. Izuku stated, which, I don't really mind for those who have the same reason. Like I said, it's a profession. You are getting paid for your service and that's completely fine. Izuku quickly, corrected while facing the camera to avoid any misunderstanding to those who are watching the interview. And don't want Achako to be mad at him when he get back. Then what is that bothered you about a hero as a profession? The interviewer ask. What I do mind are those who became heroes in name only. Those who became heroes to gain attention, to gain fame, and ultimately to gain money with no regards of anything heroics at all. Izuku explained. So a money-centric hero that you despised of? I can understand that, and I think most people could understand that as well. These heroes are more of a celebrity hero than your standard heroes. The interviewer agrees. Speaking of celebrity heroes, there's actually three type of heroes in our society. Izuku make a three-finger gesture. What are they in Colonel Midoriya's eyes? The interviewer asks intrigued. The first, those who are good at heroism, but not really recognized. Basically they are sucked at being a celebrity. And usually the true type of heroes exist in this small group. Izuku explained the first type. The type of heroes that do their job because it was the right thing to do and felt unnecessary to gain any unimportant or interfering attention. The interviewer added, correct. The second type, those who do well enough in both heroism and celebrity. These people are capable as heroes and recognized by people around them but not in a wide scope. Izuku explained the second type. The type of heroes who are able to do their job well enough in regard socializing with the public or press is also important to reassure the public that they are safe. The interviewer added, also the true type of heroes can be found in this broader group as well as Izuku added. In the last type, the interviewer said, the last type is divided into two. The first one are those who able to do their job as a hero exceptionally well and also massive famous. Example like the number one hero, All Might, the former number two before the whole Dabai situation, Endeavor, Best Genist, Ryuku, Hawks, and so on. Izuku explained, I'm pretty sure everyone knows those names. The interviewer smile, yeah, unfortunately. They also know the second one. In the other end of the spectrum, the heroes that extremely famous just not because they are heroes, Izuku said with annoyance in his voice. The interviewer also frowned as he know that type of heroes as well. Right, the heroes in name only. He said forcefully smiling. Those who are famous because of sensation, gossips, rumors, controversy. Those are some of the most famous heroes out there. Outside of those who actually famous because they are heroes, Izuku said annoyed. And there is one incident that got viral regarding that type of heroes the interviewer opened his tablet as he searched for a news file. The Kodo City Evacuation Center incident he said as he find the file. Oh, I know that one. I read the file. 
Izuku recognized the incident. Koto City is being used as an evacuation site by the heroes and police when the Liberation Army attacked Tokyo. The incident happened on 4th of January, where a group of heroes forced their way into the already crowded artificial island and threatened to throw out some civilians if they are denied to enter. The civilians got mad and conflict arise between the group of heroes and the evacuating civilian. The interviewer read the file. And unfortunately, the situation only get under control when the military arrived there by helicopters, and I'm pretty sure everyone knows it. By now that one of the heroes dared to yell that he is a great hero, Izuku claim annoyed, but he decided to run away and take cover behind the unarmed and untrained civilians instead the interviewer shake his head. The conflict really stirred the hearts of people in that island as they refuses to accept any heroes unless they are severely injured. And once the video of the incident went viral, the people's opinions of heroes has changed. The interviewer added, it already changes even before the Great Revelation by both Dabai and Endeavor, and it changes drastically after the Great Revelation. Izuku claim, The past seven months has been radically different for everyone than they ever imagined. People will and already see heroes in a different light than they used to be. It could be good, it could be bad. But one thing for certain, heroes will stay. Because deep down, a hero is a title given by other for someone with extraordinary achievement, not a profession. Izuku stated, One last thing, Colonel, if you are a hero, what type are you? The interviewer asked, If I recognized myself as a hero, then I'm a realistic hero. A hero who doesn't shine in the spotlight, but do his job well. A hero that wasn't born, but built, forged in darkness, shaped in battle, and defined by sacrifice. A realistic hero that the world really needs but often overlooked. Izuku stated seriously, Because you are not the ideal hero the interviewer stated. Exactly. All Might is the idealistic hero. While I'm the realistic hero Izuku agrees. Izuku look at his watch and realize it's already 7pm I'm sorry, but I need to go home now. Izuku apologize. Ah, uh, it's alright, Colonel. If any, I should apologize for taking your time. The interviewer reassure as they both stand up. It's okay. Thank you for inviting me. Now I need to get back fast before my girlfriend's friends will kill me. Izuku said as he prepared to leave. The interviewer look at Izuku with confused smile I'm not surprised that you already have a girlfriend, but your girlfriend's friends will kill you, not her. He asked confused. Even though she is more than able to fight, she won't hurt me. Her friends in the other hand are completely different. A bunch of idiots. Izuku explained while mumbling the last part. Looks like they are very lively. The interviewer commented. Emphasis on very. Those clowns always a troublemaker. Izuku smile while describing his friends now, if you excuse me. Izuku gesture to leave. Ladies and gentlemen, Colonel Izuku Midoriya of Ranger Corps Task Force 141, and the recently promoted war hero and symbol of hope. The interviewer addressed Izuku before Izuku waved to the camera and walk out from the stage. One and a half hour later, Izuku is now currently standing in front of One Alliance, UA. He spotted several dozens green and blue dots on his radar, despite the dorm looks empty and dark. For a second Izuku is confused until he remembers what date is today. He inhale before exhale and decide to go for it. He opened the door and the second he gets in. Happy birthday. Izuku is greeted with bright lights, party confetti, cakes, presents, and cheerful smiles from his classmates and their parents as well as the teachers. Today is 15th of July, 2221, Izuku Midoriya's 18th birthday. Izuku just stand there on the door as his head is full of confetti. You guys are lucky that I realized today's my birthday, so I anticipate that you'll surprise me. If I didn't then it might get messy he claim as he clean his head from confetti. Well, we're relying on you to realize what day is today Kaminari claim with some of them nodding. Don't get over-reliance on me. I thought you guys promised to do that. Izuku ask. The class then look away in guilt as Izuku is right, but they break the promise easily. Today's a special case, so it doesn't count. Mina claim. Izuku just stand there and deadpan Mina and the others with a flat face. Mina started to sweat and nervous and as more seconds passed and Izuku didn't say anything. Everyone started to sweat nervously as well. Midoriya, Kirishima call him nervously. I'm out of here. Izuku finally speak as he turns around and went outside. Wait, 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 wait. Everyone scream in panic. Come on, man. We're just joking. Kirishima said nervously. Well the joke is not funny, so cut it off. Izuku said annoyed as he get back inside the dorm. Well, since the important guest has arrived, the birthday party has begun. All Might announce as he lifts his drink to the air. Everyone then cheer in unison before beginning to enjoy the party. Izuku shake his head in amusement they're enjoying this more than I did he thought. Yuraraka approach Izuku and scoop Izuku's left arm so you don't like a money-centric hero. She teases Izuku regarding the interview from earlier. Izuku tense a little bit I said I don't like heroes who only focus on money while abandoning their responsibility as a hero. I made that point clear he corrected. So you don't like me? Yuraraka ask. When did I said that? Izuku ask back. 
Well, I assume you're a rocker reply, but get cut off. You assumed, that's very subjective. Listen, I know you wanted to be a hero because you wanted to make money for your parents, but deep inside you wanted to save others and see them smile, didn't you? Izuku asked. Hiroraka looked at Izuku for a while before admitting sigh, you're right. The first time I see a hero in actions is very memorable for me. And when he defeated the villains, everyone smiled happily, including my parents. So yeah, I do wanted to be a hero because I wanted to see people smile she explained before looking at Izuku again with a smile. And I wanted you to smile as well. And I'll try my best to smile myself. I got you, I got Uri, I got everyone in this room. I was very lucky to still have you after everything that has happened Izuku smile fondly so regarding you question from earlier. I never said I hate you Izuku explain. Because you loved her. Mina yell from a distance as she, Gyro, Toru, and some of the mothers secretly eavesdropping on them. Annoyed, Izuku grabbed his pistol and aimed at the eavesdropping group with a cold expression. Taken by surprise, the group immediately disperse as they pretend to enjoying the party again. Don't dig your graves even deeper than it already was Izuku threatened before he holster back his pistol. You need to stop doing that Yuraka told Izuku. And they need to mind their own damn business Izuku said annoyed when Iri approached them. Dad. Mom. Iri squeal as she run into Izuku's arm. Hey, little girl Izuku lift Iri up his arms. Are you enjoying the party, Iri? Yuraka asked smiling. I did. This is fun. Iri reply happily. I'm happy if you're happy Izuku stated as the three of them smile together. Um, Dad, can I ask you a question? Iri requested. Sure, what do you want to know? Izuku reply. Do you love mom, dad? Yuri asked cutely. Izuku's expression drop and quickly look at Mina and her group as he knows exactly who influenced Yuri like this. Mina felt Izuku is eyeing on her. No, she felt a predator is preying on her. She muster her courage then face Izuku before winking. Like she won something. Sigh, Kirishima, control your girlfriend, man. Izuku yell annoyed. Kirishima spit his drink towards the unfortunate Bakugu W1. He yelped surprise while blushing. Kai Kai Kirishima. W-H-Y me and him. Mina yell shocked while beginning to get pinkier on her cheeks. Shitty. Hair. Bakugu yell angrily. Oh shit. Kirishima cursed before running away. Come back here, shitty hair. I'll kill you. Bakugu blasted away chasing the poor Kirishima. You better save your boyfriend, Ashido. If you don't want to be single again you're a rock tease. Oh oh Achako. Mina yell embarrassed while her mom and Kirishima's mom eyeing her with starey eyes. Oh, you didn't tell me you and that redhead have something between you, Ashido Mina's mom tease. I want to know in detail what between the two of you Kirishima's mom tease. Mina's face only getting pinkier before she run away Kirishima, wait, take me with you. She yell while running to where Kirishima goes. Ara I don't know you are that bold, Ashido Mina's mom tease. Better use protection Kirishima's mom tease as Mina run outside to wherever Kirishima run to while the others on the dorm laugh by the impromptu entertainment. Izuku shake his head when Uri tug his shirt, making him to look at Uri. You didn't answer. Uri pout. Izuku blinks before smiling yes, I do love mom. And I do love you, as well. He reply. Uri smile brightly. I love you too, too. Uri yell happily before hugging the two of them. I guess this is parenting. Izuku smile at Uraraka. Some says we're too young to become a parent. Uraraka said. Well screw them. We'll make this work. Izuku promises. Don't make a girl a promise that you can't keep Uraraka pout. Yeah, very cutely pout as well. Luckily for the both of you, I always try me best keep my promises. Izuku claimed proudly before kissing Uri's forehead, making her to giggle, and kissing Uraraka in the lips, making her to be happier now come on, let's enjoy the party together. Izuku said as the three of them approached the diner table full of food. But wait, there's more. Trailer for what's next. After six months of heavy fighting, World War III is over. The war may be over, but the fight is still on. We still need to recover and rebuild the destroyed society. And one way to do that is to have a vacation. Class 1 a squeal happily. Well, I guess this is not all that bad Izuku said smiling fondly of the beautiful night view of the rice field around the office before drinking his Beck spear. Class 1 are all gathered on Nabu Island. Japan are lacking heroes necessary to protect the public. That's why we're sending you all to Nabu Island to do a real hero work there. This could be an excellent experience for all of you. Aizawa explained. Ida is carrying an old lady and carrying her to her destination. Takoyami is flying in the air while making a phone call. Ayama and Mina are clearing a landslide while the people behind them cheer for their work. Anjiro being fangirled by some female tourists. Toru mentioned a call from the office. Tirashima panicked as he tries to calm down a baby and her mother. Koda is being licked by a dog while making a phone call. Sato row his boat at incredible speed. Asui swim under the ocean. So many heroes a small boy said in awe as he and another girl look at class 1 at doing their work from a hill. A great evil come unexpectedly. I stole eight different quirks, and now I'm able to use nine different quirks the villain claim as he stand on the hill of a city. 
lighting strike down to a street on the city before exploding the street and a massive blackout happened in the city soon after. I finally found you. I'll take your quirk the villain said as he extend his hand towards the two kids. A new enemy, Nine. You. You are dangerous Nine claim as he and Izuku stand face to face in a forest. I will be greatly insulted if anyone didn't consider me as dangerous. Especially after WW3 Izuku claims somewhat insulted before he fire his rifle at Nine who block it with a yellow energy barrier. Nine created a large explosion that exploded a building. His quirk. His ability. It reassemble all for one Izuku stated while gritting his teeth in anger. One by one, Nine's subordinate began attacking the island. Row of boats are destroyed by Slice. Bakugu, Kirishima, and Kaminari are overwhelmed by Mummy. Chimera easily overpowered Todoroki, Shoji, Sato, Siro, and Ajiro. Izuku cock his right arm before launching a powerful right punch at Nine. But Nine easily blocked it with multiple energy barrier. Son of a. Izuku curse annoyed. Don't you think this is over? Bakugu scream while maneuvering in the air, avoiding Nine's laser attack. Nine launched several laser strike that Izuku and Bakugu avoided. As Izuku and Bakugu about to attack Nine from close range BLAM, a massive lighting strike the two of them out of nowhere. A-H-H-H. Izuku and Bakugu scream in incredible pain. Bakugu. Midoriya Nai Chan. The two kids scream terrified while crying. An overwhelming enemy and no reinforcement. Then what we supposed to do? The villains are stronger than us. It only a matter of time. Before they completely defeated us. Minda said terrified for his life. If they managed to defeat it us this bad, how we supposed to fight them? Ada said distraughtly as most if not all of class 1 are heavily injured. Together, Izuku suddenly said making everyone to look at him. Bakugu scoff will lose. Then we'll do that together as well. Izuku stated, fight till the end. Those civvies, they are the mission, not us. Izuku stated seriously. Good Bakugu said before he stand up from his chair and look at Izuku seriously give us our orders. Sir he requested as everyone stand up as well and look at Izuku seriously. Izuku look at his classmates and see determination on their faces. They are ready Operation Island Fortress is a go. He stated seriously. Mission is a go. Class 1A, roll out. Izuku ordered. I will stop you Todoroki claim before launching an ice attack towards Chimera. I'm ready now. Mind a scream in the air before throwing his purple balls. Now, guys. Koda called someone to evacuate. An all-out attack. Siro and Yuraraka yell together as Yuraraka throw multiple large rock up then Siro use his tape to launch them forward. This is my own world Takoyami claim as he is face to face with Slice on a K. Shoji is carrying the two kids away. We are heroes. Sato claim as he push back rubble from entering a cave full of civilian. To the last team. Kirishima tank Chimera's superheated laser attack. Asui grab Chimera's hand with her tongue. Bakugu launch himself across a field. To the last soldier. Mina do a cartwheel to avoid Slice's attack inside the cave. Ayama launch a massive naval laser. Gyro run away before making a vibration attack with her quirk. To the last bullet, Ajiro do a spinning tail strike. Yeyorazu create two massive cannons. Hiroshima punch Chimera who block it. To the last drop of blood, Ida run at high speed. Die. Bakugu rapid fire his AP shot while Izuku emptied his RM-277R assault rifle magazine towards 9. We fight. Class 1 to declare vigorously. Then disappear before me 9 claim before launching an attack. The hero who answer the call of duty, Nabu Island Defense. Nine suddenly make a giant storm above the island. The storm is so huge it engulfed the entire Nabu Island. Lightning and thunder roar from the storm as the bruised and battered Bakugu and Izuku stand in front of Nine. What the fuck? Bakugu gaped a little. Sigh. I should have died in that damn war Izuku mumble annoyed. And with that, I'll see you all in the next part. Take care and bye bye.